It's pretty cold outside, boys. Let's chop some wood. Splitting wood, dangerous or bad for your back? Not if you do it correctly. First thing you need to do is figure out what axe to use. For big pieces of wood like that, you can use a splitting axe or splitting hammer. For small pieces of wood like this, you can use a much smaller axe like a trekking axe or even a, a hand axe. The splitting hammer looks almost the same as a splitting axe, but the biggest difference is the size of the casing of the splitting hammer. It's much thicker. Also, it has a thicker back. This is the only type of axe you should use on the metal wedge, and the metal wedge is used to break down real big pieces of wood or pieces of wood that have lots of knots in them. Today we're cutting up regular sized pieces of wood, so I'm going to use the normal splitting axe. The next step is finding the right chopping block. Make sure it's a piece of wood that's bigger than the wood you're going to split, and make sure it's about knee high. The right chopping block will protect you from hitting yourself or the ground. Always use a chopping block. If you really can't find a chopping block anywhere, you can split wood on the ground, but for the durability of your axe and for the safety of yourself, I would advise against it. But never use uh, a chopping block that is too high because then you will always hit yourself and not the ground. Before you start, check your surroundings. Make sure there's no children, no pets around, and make sure there's nothing on the ground that you can stumble over. Always keep the kill zone in mind. The kill zone is the diameter of your outstretched arm, including the axe. Make sure there's nothing here that you can snatch on. If you want to show people your new wood splitting skills, make sure they are standing on the right side or on the left side of you with plenty of space. Another thing to think about is to properly position the wood on the chopping block. Always make sure it's as far back on the chopping block as possible. Why? Because if I miss, I'm going to hit the chopping block. If the wood is too far in front and now I miss, I'm going to hit my toes. Check the log you're going to split for any knots and any already existing cracks. If possible, always try to aim for the already existing cracks. Never hit directly on a knot. This might deflect your axe or get your axe stuck. Now that we know where to position the wood and where to hit it, we're gonna talk distance. Hold the end of the axe handle in your dominant hand, stretch out your arm and place the tip of the, the axe on the edge of the wood. Never aim for the middle or even the back of the wood. If I strike and I aim for the back, I'm gonna overstrike about five centimeters and I'm gonna break the, the axe handle. Now that you know the distance, uh, it's time for the technique. Bring the axe head close to your body, hold it with your other hand, lift up, let the hand slide to the other hand and bring the axe down. When you bring the axe down, bend your knees so you don't hit yourself uh, when you miss. So like this, stretch your arm on the edge, bring it to your body, go up and down. As you can see, sometimes hitting it one time is not enough. Um, don't try to lift the piece of wood and the axe at the same time. Hold the piece of wood with one hand and with the palm of your hand, slap the end of the handle and the axe will come, come out easily. After you are done splitting all your wood, uh, put the axe back indoors. If you're just taking a small break, you can leave the axe in the wood, make sure there's no part of the edge sticking out. Never leave the axe just laying on the ground. People can stand on it and after a while it might rust. All that there's left to do is to stack the wood, leave some air gaps in between and let the wood dry for the recommended amount of time for your type of wood. Now you'll certainly be the best wood splitter in your neck of the woods.